This is Game Chat Boy, episode 134. Negativity travels. Mm hmm. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 134 of Game Chat 1. We got a great show lined up for you. Got some good stories, about five or six stories to talk about today. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed the last episode of the Tale of Two Rants. That was a 50 minute, it was like over an hour, I think. An hour of just me ranting about a whole bunch of stuff with Anthem and some stuff with Borderlands 3 in the Epic Game Store. It was a pretty engaging episode. Even my wife got involved. You know, she was like, she was listening to the podcast and she, she said she was actually arguing with the podcast on some points i was like oh that must be a good podcast though. a good episode if it's got you arguing with the podcast but uh, if you guys got comments like that you can leave them in the comments below that you know i don't bite i don't bite uh but today's show is going to be pretty pretty standard we got about five or six things to talk about everything ranging from the bafta awards to a follow-up to bioware's story on anthem and uh some stuff with eve online even too we're going to talk some some stuff about negativity on the internet and uh something that i i saw recently that inspired me to to kind of investigate or not even investigate but to just talk more about that topic so let's get right into the show and for our first story we're going to talk about bioware and uh, the whole anthem fiasco that we talked about last week uh, with the article from Kotaku, this is a follow-up that was posted from uh, Jason Schreier over on Kotaku.com. And um, I've already discussed BioWare's response to Jason's article last week. If you haven't checked that out, go check out uh, episode 133 of Game Chat with Buona. And uh, this is a follow-up. And this is uh, BioWare's head boss basically replying to what the allegations were and the allegations were that there was a lot of uh, mental issues and a lot of depression and anxiety that caused a lot of employees to leave Bioware. Casey Hudson is the name of the boss that I'm referring to. And uh, the reason why this is so, so perplexing is because the PR statement that came from Bioware generally stated that things were fine, that their postmortems didn't show what the article was accusing Bioware of having in their in their environment. So this is a note from from Casey Hudson. <clears throat> this is a an internal memo. It's pretty long, but uh, some of the quotes that I want to he says I want to get a note out to you to share my thoughts about the Kotaku article and the online discussion. It has raised the article mentions many of the problems in the development of Anthem and some of our previous projects. And it draws a link between those issues and the quality of our workplace and the well-being of our staff. These problems are real, and it's our top priority to continue working to solve them. And then he goes on uh, about what they're going to do and, you know, his commitment to helping them. He uh, says, I'm committed to getting us to a place where we are delivering on the highest expectations for Bioware games through a work environment that's among the very best in the world. With your help, we will get there. Please let me know if we can talk in person. I'll be happy to set up a time to hear your thoughts. So, wow, um, this, is, this is quite the turnaround from Bioware. I, I wonder if the person who wrote that article or the response to the article is still with the company because this sounds like a direct contradiction to what they were saying. Um, as, uh, a lot of that rebuttal that they had before was, you know, defending individuals because individuals were named. And uh, Jason Schreier claims that he only named uh, some of the high level execs and no, I guess you call them foot soldiers or normal employees were named. Uh, There's only a couple people that were named and, you know, Bioware was against that. They said that, you know, they don't want to single people out. It's a team effort, blah, blah, blah. But then they go to say that, um, that <laughs> I think in the beginning of their response, that the postmortems of our project showed that none of this was a concern. You know, it wasn't even a big deal. Um, so I guess that, that may have brought up the problem, too. And it, it, just, it just goes to highlight how quickly things can change uh, once, once the public's eye is brought to some internal issues. 
because uh, I think it may have been an environment that it was, uh, you know, I've been in some of these environments where it's a harsh environment, but it was it's taboo to bring it up. So if you go to a post-mortem meeting, nobody's going to bring it up because you may get in trouble, you may get fired, you may get a look, you know, your boss may tell you not to bring it up, which is quite possible that you may go into a post-mortem and, you know, don't bring up the stress leave, don't bring up this, don't bring up that. Just bring up issues that could have been prevented in the uh, in the project. No mental issues allowed. That's quite possible. Although I won't, I don't agree with it. It's probably one of those things they could have done. However, some companies do like to separate project based issues with HR issues because stress environment, stress based uh, leave, and um, mental health issues can most times be taken up in HR postmortems or one-on-ones with HR uh, personnel. So while it's easy to, for even me to do it, to even compare what happened in this response with the other response, it could be, it could have been accurate because a lot of those things may have been covered in HR, but the light of the response, you know, you, you gotta admit, it, it made it seem like it wasn't really a big deal. And in actuality, it probably was a big deal. So we'll be uh, we'll be following this one up to see if Casey Hudson's note to his employees will make a big difference um, on their future projects or even on Anthem. But right now, the company seems to be seems to be in a in a, in a backpedaling state, responding to all this public outcry about what happened with Anthem, both from a game standpoint and both from an internal employee standpoint check it out guys over on kotaku kotaku.com jason posts this uh follow-up article bioware boss addresses studio issues vows to continue working to solve them and for our next story we're going to talk about bafta the bafta game award winners for 2019 if you don't know what this is this is the british academy game awards uh 2019 uh, a bunch of different categories. I'm just going to go down the list and name some of these and I'll give my thoughts. Artistic Achievement, Return of the Obra, Obra Den. Uh, Audio Achievement, God of War, Best Game, God of War. British Game, Forza Horizon 4. Debut Game, Yoku's Island Express. Evolving Game, Fortnite. Family Game, Nintendo Labo. Game Beyond Entertainment, My Child Lebensborn. Game design goes to Return of the Oberden. Game innovation, Nintendo Labo. Mobile game goes to Florence. Multiplayer goes to A Way Out. Music, God of War. Narrative, God of War. Original property into the breach. Performer, Jeremy Davis. And uh, E Mobile Game of the Year, voted for by the public, is Old School RuneScape. Now, there's a bunch of, uh, there's a whole bunch of nominees with this, like Artistic Achievement. At Detroit Becoming Human, uh, uh, Gris Development Team, uh, Gris Development Team, I'm sorry, God of War, uh, Marvel Spider Man, and Red Dead Redemption. So, artistic achievement had a, and, uh, had a really big, big, some big names in there. And, and the winner was Return of the Obra Dinn. Uh, audio achievement had Battlefield 5 in there as well. Detroit Becoming Human, Marvel Spider Man, Red Dead Redemption, and Tetris Effect. But God of War won that. Best game. This is like their game of the year, I guess. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Astro Bot Rescue Mission. Celeste. God of War. Red Dead Redemption 2. And Return of oh, Return of the Obra Dinn. And uh, the winner went to God of War. Um, British game was 11-11. Memories Retold. Uh, Force Horizon 4. Which was the winner. Red Dead Redemption 2. The Room. Overcooked. Two Point Hospital. Uh, and Forza Horizon took that. Debut game, Be- Beat Saber, Cultist Simulator, Donut County, Florence, Gris, and the winner was Yoku's Island Express. Evolving game, Destiny 2, Elite Dangerous Beyond, Fortnite, Overwatch, Sea of Thieves, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. So these are like evolving games, games that are constantly updated. Fortnite won that. Family game, Lego Disney's Pixar The Incredibles, Overcooked 2, Pokemon Let's Go, Super Mario Party, Yoku's Island Express, and the winner was Nintendo Labo. That's just some of these. I'm not going to read through all of these. Uh, but uh, it, it was pretty heated. But God of War obviously just swept the entire thing. It's so many awards. How many did they win? Let's see. Uh, you no know, Performer Jeremy Davis, that counts as God of War. One, two, three, 
four, five. Five awards. God of War walked away with five awards. And I really think Spider-Man. My, my thing is, I thought Spider-Man was one of the best games last year. Um, out of everybody. Everywhere. And uh, I, I was really sad to see it not get a nod. Because I think I really think they, they did a good job with that game. Now, I was hoping it would win something. Um, but, man, it was a great game to me. I've never played God of War, though. I'm not a God of War guy. I do respect it. I do believe all the people that that said they loved it i believe that it was genuine but for me this was all about spider-man man spider-man uh i guess i can speak on the evolving game because a lot of these i played did us destiny 2 elite dangerous beyond fortnite overwatch sea of thieves and tom clancy's rainbow six each first off i don't know why sea of thieves is even up here uh no <laughs> first off the game i think is too new and then on top of that they really haven't done anything yet. And it's been it's been very, very shallow so far. Even the updates they've been added adding hasn't really added that much. So I can agree with Overwatch, I can agree with Fortnite, Elite Dangerous. Eh. The December update was really, really good. I guess if they're talking about that. The Beyond update. Oh, they are. Okay, they actually put Beyond in there. Okay, yeah. Then I can agree with that. Destiny 2 Forsaken, I can kinda agree with that. And Rainbow Six Siege, yeah, I can agree with all that. But see if these, I don't, I don't understand that one. That that seems a little bit, eh, you know. Uh, we'll see. Um, of these other ones, yeah, original property. I guess when we talk about that, Dead Cells, Florence, Moss, Return of the Oberdin, and Subnautica was on here too. That's cool. Uh, Into the Breach won that. I haven't played that yet. I've been meaning to try that game. Into the Breach. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, David Brevik was going to use the same name on his game, uh, but he chose they chose not to because it would have been a direct conflict um, of his new game that he's working on. They were going to call it Into the Breach, but they didn't. But check it out, guys, over on BAFTA.org. They got the details of the BAFTA Game Awards. You can check out the full list and nominees on the website. What do you guys think? You think God of War should have won all of those awards? What game you think should be in some of these categories? Let me know in the show notes. I mean, let me know in the comments. What am I talking about? Bad. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler is a JRPG uh, on the Nintendo Switch, which was one of the first games that I saw on Nintendo Switch that I said, man, I would actually play that game. Um, around the release time is when I actually got the Switch and played it on my uh, played it on my live stream at twitch.tv slash one. You can also find footage up at um, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash born. I got a playlist of it up there. Uh, it is a pretty, pretty similar to Final Fantasy type games where you've got turn-based combat and you've got a party of different classes that have different abilities and items that attack different monsters and random encounters. And the thing that and captivated and, and just grabbed me was that it had a really, really good art style. Now, the story I'm going to talk about is from gamatsu.com is that Octopath Traveler is has been rated for pc in korea so it may be coming to pc as a pc port and i gotta say i highly recommend this game if you haven't played it you're into old school turn-based rpgs like the final fantasy series octopath traveler is a great great game even my my alert sound on my live stream is from that game where where tressa goes thank you <laughs> Where she <laughs> she does her steal ability on different mobs and she says thank you. That is my alert sound on my live stream. I, I really love this game. Um so yeah, it'd be really, really good if this came to PC. And I wonder if it's gonna be published on the Epic Store. Now, but the uh the, the, the listing says it's gonna be uh it's gonna be published by Bandai Namco, which has been known to to publish uh Square Enix games. So this seems legit. So we're gonna be watching this one very closely. If you haven't checked out Octopath Traveler on the Switch, if you own the Switch, you need to see if you wanna buy it. You need to check your funds, check your wallet. Because it is a worthwhile game to check out over there. Check it out, guys. Over on Gamatsu.com, they got the details about Octopath Traveler possibly coming to PC. It's a good one. It's definitely a good one. And for our next story, we're going to talk about EVE Online. EVE Online, the space game where people spend billions of dollars on ships. And No, nah, I'm just joking. Usually when there's a, a headline in 
in the uh, the news about Eve Online. It's about oh, three million dollars worth of ships were destroyed in a giant battle, or this player has stolen the equivalent of seven hundred thousand dollars in ships and modules, and they always like to tie a real money value to assets in Eve. But this particular story is about a real life counterpart to a character in Eve Online. A player by the name of uh, Brisk Rubal, he is an actual real life lobbyist who is now or was sitting on the Council of Stellar Management, which is like their it's like their player council, which is like the player uh, is like the voice of the players to uh, CCP so that, you know, issues and stuff that come up in the game can be, can be properly communicated from players to the company. And it's an election that takes place every uh, every so often in EVE Online. They elect players to be to seat, to seat be seated on the counter of stellar management. So this guy was permanently banned in EVE Online for corruption. It's kind of funny because his role in real life almost mimics exactly what he's doing in the game. And he's been, he's been banned from the game. He hasn't Nothing has happened in real life, but um, they have accused him. This is a pretty it's a pretty high accusation. They have accused him of let me get the the actual text of what they accused him of. Um, let's see. He was permanently blamed for sharing confidential information with the member of his alliance that was later used by another alliance member to conduct illicit in-game transactions and this is this is the meat of it this is where the drama eve is good at drama let me tell you the miss this misconduct was brought to us by the csm themselves this is the other people that sit on the council of stellar management as an immediate threat to the integrity of the csm as an institution ccp stance on this is clear regardless of the type of information shared acts like this go against everything that the council of stellar management stands for and will not be tolerated under any circumstances. Now, uh, Mr. I think his real name is Schumann. Schumann, Schumann, Brian Schumann. He made a lengthy public statement denying any wrongdoing. This is an update on the PCGamer.com article. He says that CCP Games is not responding to his request for information about what specifically he was banned for and asserts that he did not break any non-disclosure agreements or share confidential information. Here's this quote. He says, as a licensed attorney for nearly a decade, I have never had a complaint filed against me. I have served in positions of public trust in the United States government and have never had a complaint filed against me. The claims that I would risk my reputation by providing proprietary or otherwise confidential information to members of my own alliance for personal gain are false. There is no reason why I would jeopardize all of that by violating my word, putting my reputation online, and risking all of this to provide a fellow player with an unfair advantage in the game. I will fight these, uh, these false allegations, restore my reputation, and seek all avenues for recourse available to me for these reckless actions. I'll quote. Um, this, this, this sounds like a scandal. This is like, this is like soap opera like level scandal stuff. Like somebody, it was a one-armed man. Somebody set me up. And I, <laughs> it, it, it's so it's, it's, Eve is such a, a cutthroat game inside the game that it, it, it's so often and you've read, you've read stories that so often bleeds into real life. Like people can't separate the game from real life. It's, it's like that's people call Eve a second job. It's like, you know, you know, uh, spaceships is serious business. There's a lot of sayings and memes about it. But in all truth, man. People take this game way too seriously. It is a video game that people spend thousands of dollars a year on, number one. And then number two is just the links that people go to to ruin somebody else's reputation, both in-game and out-of-game. There have been a lot of public doxing that's been happening in this game. A lot of threats, you know, real-life stuff over the past few years that CCP has been trying to, to get under control. But this right here, I mean, this could affect this guy's real life, uh, his real life profession, if if it turns out to be, you know, accurate. My first, my first, my first impression and my first reaction to this is that this guy's been set up. 
it's really easy to falsify information and just come up with logs and, and just falsify logs and stuff and put people in certain situations or even compromise the guy's account and do stuff. You know, it's there's so many things that could have happened here. I don't know why I'm siding with this guy. I don't even know him. I, I, I don't you know, there's no reason to trust him. But my first gut reaction is that, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really think he did it. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, I mean, his, his his response makes sense. He's like, why would I do that? I, I, it, there, there's no reason to do that, but you know that hasn't stopped people in the past. So that's that's not an excuse that can hold water in all cases. You know, some people do stupid stuff for stupid reasons and have no reason to do them, but they do them anyway. So check this story out, man. This guy Brian or Brisk Ball, Eve Online, a public servant, if you will, has been banned from Eve Online permanently. And all of his assets, I didn't even tell you about that. Uh, they're going to, um, let's see. I, I think they have it. It says all of his stuff, because he, he's got two other people that are going to be banned too. Um, here it is. Uh, effective immediately, he removed. He was removed from his role and permanently banned from the game. Two other players named Dark Shines and Pandora, Pandora Lika also received year-long bans, and all the ISK, which is the in-game currency, and goods associated with the schemes, which sounds a lot like EVE Online version of insider trading, has been confiscated. So they took all of his money and ships, uh, along with his, uh, these other two guys, or gals. Um, interesting. Interesting. You, you can't make this stuff up, man. When they talk about emerging gameplay, I didn't know it would really do this. This is some serious emergence right here. Check it out, guys. Over on PCGamer.com, they got the details. A real-life lobbyist was just permanently banned in EVE Online for corruption. And for our final story, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about something that we I saw on the Joe Rogan podcast. And it affects games. It affects gamers. Uh, this is how it came on my radar because uh, it was quoted by Ninja. He said Kevin Hart was speaking to his soul. And I was like, oh, I got to see this. Uh, essentially, what happened? And I said essentially, and um, and I'm probably gonna say, uh, what's the other one? You know, you know, see, me? you know, you know. Uh, Kevin Hart was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and the topic of negativity came up. And uh, Kevin Hart says that negativity these days is popular, and Joe Rogan and him were going back and forth about why that is. And uh, Kevin says something very, very true. He said being negative is cool these days. It is. It is the popular opinion to be negative, to be the, the negative opinion. And we see it in games all the time. If you, if you follow any subreddit, if you follow any game community, it is very popular. The, the, the negative viewpoint is always going to be the more popular viewpoint. Reasonable arguments and stuff like that, you know, sometimes rise to the top. But the negative opinion gets the views gets the popularity you see it on youtube videos you see it on game reviews angry rants and stuff like that people who are negative get the attention because that's what people want to see and that's the words that those are his exact words he said that's what people want to see they want to see the negative nobody wants to see the positive and i've been noticing this for a long time i first noticed it and called it out i don't know if i called it out on the podcast i'm gonna go hipster on you guys a little bit um I called it on the podcast when the term white knight first was like introduced. And I was like, what in the deuce is white knight? And it's like, this guy's white knighting. He's white knight. No, basically, what it means is that this person comes into a negative discussion and defends who's ever been attacked or someone who's been attacked. He's white knighting. And uh, this is how it started. This is how it came out. If you came into a negative situation where everybody's being negative and you come in and be positive oh this guy's white knighting it's since evolved to something different now where white knighting is now being equated with fanboying where you blindly defend things now that 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 definition of white knighting has evolved since then but when it first hit it was when you just came and said no nah, man nobody's doing anything wrong oh you're just white knighting and it's just like well well, what am I, this, this is the truth. What am I supposed to say? And people, you were, you were intentionally put down for being positive. 
And it, 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 people even joke about it these days. You like somebody's ranting about something and complaining about something. You come in with a reasonable, you know, like, hey, man, that's not true. This is that. This is that. There's no reason to be upset. Like, why are you coming into our we're trying to have a, a perfectly reasonable negative discussion. You're coming in with all that positivity. You know, people even joke like that now. Uh, and it's, it's a plague. And it really is a plague. Software developers are terrified of this plague. They're terrified of this of this thing because one thing point out in the video that I'm going to link in the description, uh, it's, it's a timestamp link to when Kevin Hart starts talking about it. One thing he points out is that when one person is negative, somebody else jumps in and just wants to do it for no reason as well. Yeah, man, I hate that too. I hate that. You know, they were talking, he gave the example of, of someone talking about liking a movie. I like Titanic. And then you say, yeah, I like Titanic too. And somebody just bop, busts in, boom, I hate Titanic. Why'd you hate Titanic? I don't know. I don't have to tell you. I just hate it. You know, it's just hate, 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 hate. And then somebody else comes along. Like, I hate it too. And then I hate it. I hate that. You know, it's like all these people come in and say they hate it. Now, it's one thing to, to actually not like the movie. But you know as well as I do that majority, a majority of these cases, people don't even, they barely know what you're even talking about. They just want to jump on the hate train. And I even saw this on, I was reading the Epic Games thread. And um, it was about, uh, some guy came forth and debunked the idea that the Epic Game Store was spyware, which anybody with half a brain already knew. And the one guy put in the comments, he said, at this point, I'm just having a good time hating Epic. I was just like, well, there you go. And I, 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 I really believe he was being honest. He's just like, I just I'm just having I just like hating Epic. How can you like hating something unless you just have evil in your heart? I don't I don't understand that. And the Internet. And this is where. The discussion on Kevin Hart and on the Joe Rogan show kind of kind of alluded to is like the Internet and anonymity. People are just purposefully being negative and hateful and not even trying to be positive. That's their first reaction is to be negative. And it's become a complaint echo chamber. If you go to Twitter, if you go to Instagram, if you go to a forum, a subreddit, social media in general has become a, com a complaining and hatred echo chamber. Uh, and it, it's really bad now. I mean, you can really, really see it in some cases where people don't need, there's no rational thought. It's just constant screaming and, and, and grinding of teeth. of just, yeah, I hate this. I hate this too. You know, they're just going back and forth. And they just they're feeding off of each other's negative energy and it just it just grows and grows and grows. So you can't have a really rational thought. Like I was saying earlier, developers, they, they're terrified of this because these negative waves and these negative uh, these negative movements essentially can be a PR nightmare. From nothing. Let's take the Epic Game Store as an example. I'm not going to rant about it, but the fact that people are calling it spyware is so laughable because of a, a seemingly bad, I think it's bad programmatic practice, how they did the Steam import friends list. It's bad. It was a bad programmatic practice. It was, it was a hack pretty much, which, oh my gosh, in my years and my, my 10 to 20 years of software development, I've seen these types of hacks all over the place. All these little shortcuts and tricks that, that developers do. It's not spyware, though. And they just, they just kept throwing that spyware term out there to scare people. It was fear mongering. And yet and still, people are still propagated. And it was like the guy came forth and did a, a detailed explanation and a detailed analysis, which everybody knew was the case because the guy who brought up the original point had no clue. He even admitted he had no clue what he was talking about. He just had screenshots of various things that made no sense. And then it just started this hate wagon and this hate train. And I say it all the time. There's perfectly reasons to not. There's perfectly good reasons to disagree with companies and disagree with how they do stuff. But don't spread and propagate misinformation and lies based off of fear. That's where I have to draw the line. I can have a I can have a reasonable discussion about that stuff all day long with people. But as soon as that stuff starts happening, that's that's where logic and reason go out the window. And that's people's ammunition these days is negativity. Negativity breeds a lot of defensive reactions and then you get you get caught up in fear and then you get caught in emotion. And the next thing you know, you are getting mad on the Internet at four o'clock in the morning 
won't go to bed because you're trying to prove somebody is wrong over a video game. It's a big problem. Negativity in video games is a big problem. And there is a such thing as providing constructive criticism without being negative. And people, a lot of kids don't understand that. They're like, oh, you just want me to bend over. And, you know, you just want me to take, you know, everything. You just want me to you just just bow down to these people and just say, hey, you know, you, 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 you just do whatever you want. I'm like, no, you, you can have you can have constructive feedback and you can even actually be a little bit upset about something without being negative. It is it's called it's just called manners and, and tact. Something you kind of have to learn these days. But I think a lot of this social media generation, they just they don't know what, how to do that. And it's a, it's a crucial skill. You got to learn how to express yourself without being mad. Because <laughs> when you're angry, nobody wants to listen to an angry, angry person, let alone an angry gamer. This is why gamers have a reputation now, especially with people outside of outside of the the entertainment industry or outside of just the whole gaming market. They just think gang, gamers are complaining, whining babies. That stereotype has been formed, rightfully so, because a lot of the 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 the, the minority out there, the vocal minority, that's exactly what they're doing. It's exactly what they're doing. It's, it's a lot of crying, and negativity, and no constructive. You know, no constructive conversations that are rising to the top. The negativity rises to the top. And I know there's people out there that are passionate about gaming, like myself. You, you probably listen to this going, boy, I don't do that. You know, I have conversations. I write lengthy posts. I give developers feedback. But like Kevin Hart just said, people want to see the negative. They want to, they want to, they thrive on the negative. They want to be negative and they want to join along with the negative. And that heron is the biggest problem that we're seeing in gaming today. Nothing gets done because people are just negative. It's a very, very good podcast on a lot of different topics. If you haven't watched this Joe Rogan podcast, this is a heavy, big language warning. I have a family friendly podcast. So if you're going to go over there, and listen to this, be prepared to have your ears melted by a lot of the curse words and uh, a lot of the language on the Joe. It's a very raw podcast, but it is, it's got some topics that I think a lot of people should listen to and it was really good really really good not just on negativity but just on social media in general there's a lot of good discussions in that podcast and they're all so true so true so check it out guys kevin hart on negativity and it applies to the gaming community of why we like to be negative so much and like to propagate negativity i think it's something that needs to stop and i hope we can all come together and realize that we need to stop doing that and that concludes episode 134 of game chat when i i want to thank you all for listening to the show please follow follow my stream at twitch.tv slash when i stream almost every day over there play video games we hang out we've been playing a game called marbles on stream lately where we just we play this uh this chat based marbles game and you just race we race each other you don't have to you don't have to control yourself it's pretty fun and chill and it's oddly addicting. We've been playing a lot of that. We've been playing Borderlands and Division 2 and Warframe. Just to name a few. Play those types of games up there. So, 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 blah, blah, blah. so come check us out. Also on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Borna where I post this. And I post Tech Talk with Borna. I also post videos from tech, technology and game uh, topics, uh, updates, reviews. You can see it all over there. Also, I have merchandise. Go to Spreadshirt. I'm sorry. What? Shop.spreadshirt.com slash Borna TV. We're still on Spreadshirt for now, but we may be moving if we can't get our international stuff worked out. So right now we're on Spreadshirt. <clears throat> That's where the merchandise is. And Instagram.com. Instagram.com slash Buona. Twitter.com slash Buona. All my social media stuff is there as well. Uh, next week is going to be a little bit up in the air. Uh, Sunday through Wednesday I will have off. So I will not be recording uh, Tech Talk with Buona and Game Chat with Buona next week. That's my plan. I'm not going to be recording those. I'm going to take some well-deserved time off, like two and a half, three years of just no time off. I'm taking some time off finally. Um, and I'm going to take a few days. It's going to take three or four days and just just decompress. Uh, no podcast, no nothing. So um, the next show will be two weeks from now. So I hope you can come back and listen then. That concludes the show. Episode 134 of Game Chat 1. I hope you all have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.